second inductee into the Corvette Hall of Fame is Mr. Rick Hendrick, widely known for his achievements in NASCAR, where he is the all-time leader in Sprint Cup Series Owners' Championships. He is also the founder of Hendrick Automotive Group, the largest privately held dealership group in the country. Now, while there were many factors that contributed to his success, he credits his love for Corvette as a key to getting him started. You know, I grew up in a small town in Virginia and you didn't see any Corvettes. And, you know, I was a young kid working on the farm and I'd go into the little town that we lived near and the dealer there, the Chevrolet dealer had a son that drove a 58 Corvette. And uh, I just could not believe how awesome that car was. Fuel injection, uh, just something that you dream about. I wanted to touch it and uh, never got a chance to. My dream was to own one one day and uh, never thought I would. Back in 1971, Rick got his first Corvette, a 63 convertible, and it had the most wonderful set of side pipes on it you'd ever seen. And he came back to our hometown of South Hill, Virginia with a friend of his. And they were doing a little riding around and he got to see a, a state trooper back home. I can't tell you the guy was our favorite state trooper, but we did do a fair amount of business with the gentleman. And he was not as impressed with Rick's side pipes as Rick and them was. And he suggested maybe that they leave town and not come back. Now, that was a start. The love for that car, working on that car, I uh, began to buy and sell them later on when I was in school. Well, in 1970-71, GM went on strike, and there were a lot of wrecked Corvettes around that you couldn't buy parts for. Well, I met a guy that worked for Carolina Power and Light, and he made these fiberglass buckets. Well, he knew how to make a mold off of the side of a car, a front fender, rear fender, door, and so we'd go borrow a car of that year and we'd make a mold, buy the wrecked car and fix it and uh, turn around and sell it. I can't remember how many Corvettes we fixed, but I do remember going home at night with fiberglass all in my t-shirt and itching and scratching. And uh, it, was a great, it was a great transition for me though, to see the opportunity you had with selling used Corvettes. And that was one of the things that kind of pushed me into the automobile business. And he, then he had to sell his most prized first Corvette to get started to become a dealer, a Chevrolet dealer. Um, you know, Chevrolet helped him grow his businesses to where they are today. I first met Rick sometime around 1980 or 81. Rick had become a dealer at City Chevrolet. I became the general manager of Chevrolet Motor Division in January 1989. And Immediately thereafter, well, we were in a crisis situation, seemed continually till 1993 with finance, financial condition, one thing, the other, near bankruptcy. And so we went through a lot together during that area, him being a Chevrolet dealer and being big in racing. He had a lot at stake, he had a lot of skin in the game. And I always valued the fact that he would call me and talk with me about issues affecting both sides. And uh, I had the greatest respect for him simply because he always knew what he was talking about. As Rick continued to have success in the world of motorsports and automotive retail, he later found himself with the means to purchase the Corvettes he once had only dreamed of owning. And today, his collection is like no other, including one very special car from his past. I would trade for cars like 58s and 62s that you'd actually, back in the late 70s, early 80s, you'd only put $1,500 to $2,000 in them and I'd just put them in a warehouse and work on them when we had time, but just putting them away. First request to me in that regard was that he wanted the number one uh, ZR1. And we presented it at the Bowling Green Country Club. He did a plant tour and talked to the people and one thing the other, we made a big, big day out of it. You know, he's, he's not just a collector. He's not just a, a guy who can afford to collect. He's, 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 his, his mind is not, well, you know, the big boy toys and, and the guy with the most toys wins at the end. He's a preservationist. And it's not just a preservation for the Corvette, but for history, the history of the Corvette. And a lot of that's driven by his, his appreciation for Chevrolet Motor Division and Corvette and how he got started in this business and where he is today. I sold my first Corvette to get my first Chevrolet dealership. 
about 15, 18 years later, I found it and bought it back. And today, it's the, the chassis and the motor is my conference table. I took the body and we kind of modified it a little bit and put an LS9 with a new chassis. I've been married to my wife, Linda, for 42 years. And the first date we went on was in my first Corvette. So uh, she has a real fond memory of that night, the first night we, we dated, that's really special to me. So um, can't wait to drive it. One hallmark of many Corvette enthusiasts is their passion for philanthropy. Now, Rick has long been using Corvette as a vehicle to raise funds and awareness for a number of worthy organizations, contributing millions through bids on special charity cars for his collection. The first time I really got to experience a charitable contribution car with him being with Mr. Hendrick at Barrett Jackson was when the C7 number one coupe came out. And uh, there was a lot of talk on the ride out there, what he was going to do with it. And he, we could never get a number out of his head what was going to happen. And uh, I knew he was going to go after the car really well for two reasons. First, it's the C7, first Corvette, and then the charitable cause, the cancer research. Um, so I knew he was going to be very, very strong on that. Um, that is the first car I've ever been part of to get to seven figures. Zero, zero, 001 of the seventh generation of Corvette and all the proceeds will go to the College for Creative Studies in Detroit. I say so, Mr. Rick Hendrick, 100. Thank you very much, Rick. The greatest Corvette collection in the world. Two cars, two plus million dollars spent by that man, Rick Hendrick. And in case you're wondering... It was exhilarating. I mean, it, it was a new world for me, and I've played in the car business a long time. But to be part of that, knowing what that was for, that was definitely a very cool item to do. And then we matched it with a couple more. So I've been fortunate enough to get five or six of those cars. And, uh, and you know, it's great to have them in the collection. But it's also neat to meet the people that you help in the charities because there's so many great causes out there. And Chevrolet always picks a good one. Throughout his life, Rick Hendrick has been devoted to protecting Corvette's past as both a collector and a preservationist, ensuring its continued success in the present as a Chevrolet dealer, while looking ahead to the brand's bright future in a special way. When his kids were growing up, Lynn Hendrick Carlson and Ricky Hendrick, his father, Papa Joe, um, had Camaros for them. So when they turned 16, he would have a Camaro for uh, his grandkids. So when Mr. Hendrick's grandchildren were born, meaning you know, Kate uh, Carlson and Hendrick Carlson and, and Ricky Hendrick, Mr. Hendrick really wanted to have a car for them. So what he did was he acquired Corvettes that were built on their birthdays so that when they turn 16, they'll have a special car, a special Corvette um, that they'll remember they got from their pop pop just as Mr. Hendrick's children received a Camaro from his father, Papa Joe. And I think that's really cool. And I think it really carries the legacy forward um, with, with Corvette. Ladies and gentlemen, for his support of Corvette as one of its greatest enthusiasts, our second inductee into the 2015 Corvette Hall of Fame, Mr. Rick Hendrick.